psychologist. So I was um, in the Waukesha School District for over 20 years, and in my work there, I encountered many people with autism. Rapid prompting method. It is from a woman who came from India. Her name is Soma Mukhopadhyay, and she is now in Austin, Texas, and she came up with a method because her own son has autism, and when he was three, two and three, they lived in India, and the doctors there told her that there was, you know, she, that he had autism, but she should just keep him busy. So she's very brilliant, so she came up with this method and was using it with Tito, and he had come so far. Right now he's 24, and he's able to type what he wants to say. And, um, my company, which is called RPM Plus for Autism and Other Disabilities, and I, I added the other disabilities because it's not only for autism, it, it was created for people with autism, but it's been known now that it can be used with many different disabilities, people who are nonverbal or limited verbal um, abilities, and even some people who have quite a bit of verbal ability, but they're not very organized in their thinking, it, it's good for them. So what it is, is it's a teaching method, it's a, a method to teach academics, and that leads to communication. So what we do is we start out with lessons, and the first lesson is always very simple. Something like, the sky is blue, and you write it down, the sky is blue, and then you say, what did I say? And then you write, the sky is blank. So then you rip a piece of paper, and the ripping is very important because it's a prompt. So the student gets to used to that ripping sound, and they realize that that's a prompt, like, okay, now I have to get ready to do something. So the ripping is important. Then you write two choices. Did I say the sky is B-L-U-E, blue, or R-E-D, red? And you put that down in front of them. You hand them the pencil. Handing them the pencil is very important also. It's another prompt that they know now I have to choose. So we have to teach them what to choose and how to choose. So if they if they touch blue, great. And then we get out the stencils and we hand them the stencils and see if they can find B, L on here, and so on, U and then E. And um, the stencils are broken down because giving them a full stencil board with A through Z on it is too overwhelming at first. So we break them down, it's easier. And um, it's good to, that they can poke through to get some feedback, like, okay, I'm on the D, they can feel that. Then, sky is B-L-U-E blue. Okay, what should I say? Did I say the sky is G-R-E-E-N green? Or B-L-U-E blue? What did I say, green or blue? Yeah. Yeah, blue, is he left-handed? No, okay. Spell blue. B, good. L, awesome. U, and E, you just have to get used to it. And you gradually go from this to this. Um, and sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not so easy to go from one board to the next. And then you graduate up to perhaps a laminator board, A to Z style. And I also have the ultimate goal is to get the students onto a keyboard. And it can be any keyboard. So um, it's just a, a quite a long process to get them uh, from the beginning to the keyboard. But it is possible I have quite a few students right now who are working with um, this board flat on the table. We're trying to get there. So then the next step would be the keyboard. So it's been a great voice for people with autism because they understand. And for a long time, I, I knew that they understood a lot, but I didn't know how to get it out of them, what they wanted to say. And I could see frustration. I, I could see you know, agony because they were so frustrated by the whole situation. 